Okay, good. And we should be good to go. And for those of you who are actually watching this for my online class, uh, I'm actually doing my in-class class right now, so some of the students may be asking questions. Don't worry about it. I'm assuming if they have questions, so do you. Uh, we're going to start going over 1.1. Again, over the weekend, and this works for you online people too, your book has a review chapter in it. Go through the review chapter, see if there's anything you're unsure about, and if there's any questions, send me an email, comment on this video, or you guys let me know in class, okay? Right now, I'm willing to bet that for the most part, all of you have done algebra before, yes? Okay, good. I tend to think your book does not give you much in the way of credit. I think you can do a lot more than your book actually says. So the beginning of chapter one should be really easy. Should not take much work. I want to go through it briefly. We can essentially cover about, you know, a section or two's worth of work in maybe 10 minutes. Because all of you know your algebra. Yes? Or we'll see shortly, I guess. Your book actually starts, I think, with problems like this. X plus 3 equals 5. Can all of you solve that? Yes. I don't care about the answer, and this will become apparent throughout this entire class. I care about how you get the answer, algebraically. That's what we care about. So algebraically, how do you solve that? Just say it. You're not going to raise your hand. Yes, okay. You're all aware of how algebra works. The goal is to solve for x, isolate x, get x by itself. So in this case, in x by itself, algebraically, you always do the opposite. That's plus 3. The opposite of plus 3 is minus 3. Yes, I know I'm saying stuff you already know. I'm saying it deliberately to make sure we all understand these rules that we know. Subtract 3 from both sides, and then you get x equals 5 minus 3, which is 2, and you're done. What is the next thing you always do? Check your work, thank you. This person is now my favorite student in the whole world. Check your work. How do you check your work? You substitute in the answer. Sure, we got x equals two, plug in x equals two to get two plus three, which is five. Yes, I know this is easy, it's how your book starts. That's where we want to get through it as fast as possible. Um, you should never get a single problem wrong this entire semester. And that goes for you people online too. Yes, why? Yes, because in theory, if you check your work, you will know if your answer is right or wrong. If you check it and it works, you're right. If you check it and it's wrong, then you're wrong. Go back and start again and fix it, correct? I would argue with that perspective that in theory, if the equation that you write is wrong, then you can solve your incorrect equa equation correctly, and what you solve will check with your incorrect, incorrect equation correctly, but your answer will still be wrong because your original equation was incorrect. So there is the possibility of that happening. But we'll hope that doesn't happen. These are too easy, right? Okay, good. If I had 5x equals 20, you can all solve that too, right? What do you do? 5 by 5 on both sides. Yeah. Algebra, always do the opposite. You want to get the x by itself. That's x times 5. The opposite of multiplication by 5 is division by 5. So divide by 5. And you get x equals 20 over 5, which is 4, and yes, 5 times 4 is 20, you're good. Easy. There's actually names for these in math, we like to name everything. This is called the addition property, that's called the multiplication property. And then the next step is to combine them to make things more complicated. So suppose you have... three x plus 5 equals 14. How do you solve it? Ultimately, the goal is to solve for x, isolate x, get x by itself. So first we get rid of that. And again, I say this even though you know it. You all know order of operations, correct? You will never mess that up in this class. You won't? Good. Okay. Order of operations says multiply first, then add and subtract. Algebra is the exact opposite. You go backwards. So add and subtract first, and multiply and divide. So subtract the 5 from both sides. And you get 3x equals 14 minus 5 is 9. Then, divide. divide. Multiplication property again. Divide by 3 on both sides. And you get x equals 9 divided by 3, which is 3. If you wanted to then check it, 
right, plug the three back in. Three times three is nine. Nine plus five is 14, and you're good. Easy enough. You can all solve these. Good. Then one more. Um, how much fun should we have? Oh, well, we'll just start with this one now. We should ponder it over the weekend. 2 times x plus 3 plus 4 equals x plus 5. What do you do? Good. What's it called? Distributed. Distributed property, correct? You have to get rid of the parentheses to simplify it, so distribute. You all know how that works. 2 times x is 2x, plus 2 times 3 is 6, like you said, plus 4 equals x plus 5. Now again, the goal is the same. Solve for x, isolate x, get x by itself. Combine like terms. You've all heard of that before, right? Bring all the x's to one side, all the constants to the other. So on the left, we get 2x plus 6 plus 4 is 10 equals x plus 5. Now we have x's on both sides, so bring the x's to one side. So subtract the x on this side, or whatever you do on the right, you do on the left. Those cancel. 2x minus x is? x. Plus 10 equals 5. And now we're right back where we started all the other ones, right? All algebra is the exact same. <coughs> Get the x by itself, we have x plus 10, so subtract 10. And you get x equals 5 minus 10, which is negative 5. I'm not going to bother to write that out and check it. But you can plug in the x equal to negative 5, work it all out, and it'll be fine. Pretty easy? Pretty good? Okay, one more. I think I just said one more before that one, right? I do karate. And they always say the biggest lie in a karate dojo is one more time. Because as soon as your instructor, after you've done something a thousand times, your instructor says, one more time, and then we're good. And as soon as you finish, guess what he says? One more time. And then he says, one more time. And that goes on for hours. So that's pretty much the same here. I intend to keep you until about 10, 30 or so. I'm kidding, okay? I actually have a class that starts at 9, but I think that class is canceled. So I have nothing to do until 10 o'clock. So I may just keep you here just for the fun of it, because math is awesome and you all want to sit here and learn, right? One person nods their head. Um, do this one really fast. 2 times x plus 3 equals x plus 5 plus x. Make it easy. What do I do first? Distribute. Distribute, sure. Distributed property. So 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 3 is 6 equals x plus 5 plus x. Now what? Combine like terms. Uh, so we get 2x plus 6 equals x plus x is 2x plus 5. Now what? Get the x's on one side. Yeah, get all the x's on one side. So in this case, subtract the 2x. But whatever you do on the right, you have to do on the left. What's 2x minus 2x? Zero. Zero. So we're left with 6 equals, what's 2x minus 2x? 0. So we get 6 equals 5. What does that mean? It's an inequality. What does that mean? What is the solution to this problem? Yeah, in this case, does 6 ever equal 5? No. No. So any x I plug in up here, will it make this equation work? No. No, because irregardless of whatever x I plug in up here, the x's actually disappear right here. And I end up with something that isn't true, 6 equals 5. Which means, well, no x will ever solve this. So I guess there's no solution. And there you go. See, I actually like that because... From my perspective, that makes it more fun as a student. Maybe not from your perspective, but from my perspective. Because now you have to solve every problem and get a solution and answer it. But understand that sometimes your solution is that there's no solution. And being able to recognize when your no solution is correct because your algebra is right versus when your no solution is wrong because your algebra is wrong. 
So you really get to ponder it and think about it, which is a good thing. We should spend all of our free time thinking about math, right? Yes, you should. Okay. We have five minutes left. And what does that actually mean? That there's no solution. I know that means there's no solution and it doesn't work. What does that really mean? Why am I getting no solution? There's no zero. If you have a request, you'd never see a point that would, would cross the x axis. You actually would. So I don't like that. But since you said graphing, this is an algebra class, correct? Which means we're going to spend most of our time doing algebra. But I tend to think understanding algebra means you also understand things graphically, geometrically. And ultimately, you should understand them algebraically and geometrically and be able to go back and forth between them. And throughout the semester, we will. We'll solve something algebraically and then look at it graphically. We'll solve something graphically and then look at it algebraically. <coughs> so since you mentioned it, and we have like four minutes left, we should do that. Quick review, because I'm assuming you've, seen, you've all seen this before. If I just looked at this thing on the left, 2x plus 6, what is that the equation of if you graphed it? Does anybody recognize that? You're thinking slope, sure, slope intercept form, right? Yeah. That's the equation of a line. y equals 2x plus 6, slope of 2 intercept of 6. What is this right here on the right? It's another equation of a line, right? Mm -hmm. And ultimately, then what does that give me? I don't care about incredible detail when we graph these things. That's a line, slope of 2, intercept of 6, which means it goes up and it goes through 6 like that. That's a line, slope of 2, intercept of 5, which means it goes up at the exact same rate, but its intercept is different. What type of lines are those? Parallel. Parallel. When you're solving an algebraic equation out, where does your solution occur? When the lines intersect. Yeah. The intersections of lines, or the intersection of any equation, is your solution. Do parallel lines ever intersect? No. no. So is there ever a solution? No. Make sense? So then, to kind of finish this off maybe, generally speaking, lines can cross in one place, have one point of intersection, you get one solution, like all the problems we've done so far. Occasionally, you get two lines that don't cross, they're parallel, which is no solution. In two dimensions, in the plane on the board here, if you have two lines, are there any other possibilities? They can cross once, they can never cross, are there any other possibilities? You could do both two. The same line? The same line? What do you mean? Like as in if you had 2x plus 6 and then on the other side you had 2x plus 3 plus 3, which is a really simple equation. But then we go, and then graphically I would have one line and then the exact same line right on top of it. What type of solution would I get? But I don't like that. All real numbers, because which number is a solution? Every number. So essentially there's three possibilities we could have. One solution, they cross once. No solution, they never touch. Or infinitely many solutions, that's how some high school people do it. Or all real numbers, if they're just the same line written twice. Are there any other possibilities? In li lines in the plane, meaning on the board here, in two dimensions, can lines ever intersect in any other way? Could you ever get two solutions? Could two lines ever intersect twice, and only twice? Yes? How? Two lines, yes. Yeah, if you think about it, if I have this line right here, suppose there's another line that intersects it right there. Can this line ever intersect that line again? No, because if it did, it'd like have to curve over here, we go back up there, and then it's not a line anymore. So essentially, there's only three possibilities. They intersect once, you get one solution, you're good, that's easy. They intersect everywhere, you get infinitely many solutions. Or they don't intersect at all, no solution at all. No solution. Make sense? Any questions? Okay, good, read the review chapter, in case of snow or whatever, just keep uh, look at your student email, look at Blackboard. If anything happens, I'll post something online too. Uh, same for you guys online, even though you don't have to come to class.
You're good to go. If you have any questions, just